Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to try to walk you through asynchronous counters. Um, in this particular video we're going to be using the 74LS 74N D flip-flop and that means we're using small scale integration. Um, so this is really just an introduction to how asynchronous counters can work. Okay, um, Asynchronous, by the way, whenever we build these things uh, means not synchronized, so keep that in mind. So let's start off with just a simple circuit here. We have a D flip-flop, 74LS, 74N, and the identifying characteristic of this particular flip-flop is the green wire that you see, and that wraps around from Q0 all the way back around to D. And if you remember from previous videos and previous uh, lessons that we've covered in our class, what that causes is this is called a divide by two circuit because, and you'll see I have an oscilloscope hooked up over here. If I open this up, we can see the orange and the blue signals here. Okay, and notice everything's color coded because I color coded the wires. That's really simple to do. But you'll see that this thing is going on, off, on, off, on, off. And the blue is going on, on, off, off, on, on, off, off. In other words, the blue signal is, is oscillating at half of the frequency of the orange signal. Okay, so that's a divide by two circuit. Again, the identifying characteristic is Q naught wraps around to D. Now, the reason that I have the little hex display up here seems kind of silly. It's either a zero or a one, right, that I'm counting, but it's a counter, okay? It counts from zero all the way up to one. Now, what if I wanted to go to a bigger number? Okay, I could easily do so by just adding in more flip-flops. So now I have two flip-flops and I've tied them together. And a couple of things before I hit play here. First of all, you'll notice that Q naught wraps around to D in each of these situations. So I have a divide by two circuit here, another divide by two, so it's a divide by four circuit. In other words, green is going to be one fourth of the speed or the frequency of the orange. And so I cut in half every single time I jump down the line. But by doing this now, I have set up a pattern where I go 0, 1, 0, 1 for blue and 0, 0, 1, 1 for green. In other words, there are going to be times when I have both off, when I have this is 0 and this is 1, where I have 1, 0, which is the number 2 in binary, and where I have the number 1, 1, which is the number 3. In binary. So by adding two flip flops, okay, I can force these things to count together and count upwards. That's why they are called counters. Now, a couple of things to note before we move forward. First of all, this is the external clock down here that drives all of the movement or all of the changes in this circuit. This circuit is set to run at one hertz. That's the clock signal, so one cycle per second. And it only sends its signal in here to the first flip-flop. That's the clocking mechanism. So where do we do, or how do we get this one to clock? Well, you'll notice that what I've done is I've tied it to the output of the previous flip-flop. Now, don't worry about the fact that this goes to Q0. We will talk about that in the next video, or maybe two videos down the road. Um, whether I tie into Q or Q0 will determine the behavior of this circuit, whether it counts up or down, but that's, that's not for this video. Okay, just understand that this clock, it takes its input from the previous flip-flops output. Okay, a couple other things to note. I guess I should have said earlier, notice that preset and clear in this case are both tied to five volts. And that just means that we're not using them. I've discussed that in previous videos. Notice that both of the probes are connected to Q. That is also important. I went ahead and color coded, which is not necessary except for the reading of the oscilloscope is a lot easier when you color code. So what you'll notice here is that the orange one is going the fastest. The blue one goes half the speed and the green one goes one fourth of the speed of the orange or half of the blue. Now one thing I do want to point out before we go any further, I'm going to pause this in just a second, okay? It's worth noting that if we take this and we expand it a little bit just so we can see it, that the orange clock drives the movement of the blue flip-flop and the blue flip-flop drives the movement of the green flip-flop and why that's important is because we can't necessarily see it but there are times 
you know, for instance, uh, right here, we notice that we have a change in all three of our of our signals at the same time. And it looks like blue and green happen simultaneously here. In fact, if I drive this tag mic over, there we go. Okay, it looks like it's highlighting both of those lines. So those those changes are simultaneous. But you have to understand if I were to zoom in way, way in on my time graph. So this is two seconds per division. If I was going to go in and look at it like the nanosecond scale where electronics like electronic speeds and not human speeds, what I would notice is it actually takes time. The blue change happens before the green change. That's something called the ripple effect that I'll discuss in another video. OK. That ripple effect is going to cause you all kinds of headaches, though. The fact that the blue one changes first before the green one, okay? Now, other things, um, if you wrote down these characteristics, it looks like we've covered them all. I just wanted to point out before we go forward, you can do this with three counters. And notice that now it counts not up to number three, but I can get all the way up to one, 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 which is the number seven in binary. So I have eight states, one through seven, and zero would be the eighth state, right? I have eight different states that I can count up towards, eight numbers that I can show on my hex display here. I can even go up to 15 if I wanted to put four counters in place. And they're all connected together. All the Q dots wrap around a D, all of the flip-flops get their input from the previous output, even this one, all the way down the line. So those are asynchronous counters. Again, asynchronous because they are not synchronized, meaning that the blue one changes first, and then that ripples down to the green one, which then ripples down to the red one, which then ripples down to the yellow one. So that's why they are asynchronous counters. The only external clock that we have is connected to the first one. Now, I'm going to have more videos later on that talk about what do we want to do? How do we count down? Um, where does this ripple effect come into play? Do we have examples of it? But I'm going to leave you with this. I think it's worth your time to go ahead and write down the characteristics of asynchronous counters. And I'll leave this video up, and you can pause, obviously. And um, whenever we're ready, you can go on to the next video and start taking notes on where we talk about the ripple effect. And we'll start, start talking about some other things that we're going to use these counters for.